On today's show, we talk about MDFS going to PASIC, making light on the fact that we have a trumpet problem. And is HBCU band really exciting anymore? All this and more coming up next on Luke's Band Report. Good evening, afternoon, or whenever you're watching me right now. My name is Jay Luke, the owner and operator of the Passion Is Network and the host of Talk That Talk. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Real Talk That Talk. You can also pick up any of our merchandise at www.realtalkthattalk.com. All right, so now that we got all that out of the way, let's jump right into it. First off, and first, uh, first off, what I want to do is take this time to just actually um, send my condolences to uh, the Legion. Uh, we just lost somebody very important to the Legion family this week, uh, my rookie brother, my former roommate. Uh, and, and and while I'm not gonna give um, the name out because I'm not sure if the family is ready to do that just yet, uh, I do wanna just say, man, this has been a tough loss for the Legion family, specifically during my time, during my era, my era. Um, but just a really big, uh, a really tough loss for the Legion family. And so uh, I just wanna say, uh, you know, send love to the family and also send love to the Legion family, man. We, we've, we've been going through it for the, with this particular situation this week. Um, but, um, with that being said, let's go ahead and move forward while we're on, uh, the Spartan Legion. The amazing thing right now is the Spartan Legion, uh, million dollar funk squad has been invited to PASIC. And that is a super, super huge deal. Um, not just for, um, you know, historic uh, or not just for the Legion, but historical black colleges and universities. Um, so I'm going to read you uh, the information that I got and then just tell you a little bit. Or as a matter of fact, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about PASIC. Um, if you don't know, uh, PASIC is basically um, a percussion thing. So it's a uh, percussive arts society uh, international convention, uh, which is the acronym for PASIC. So that's kind of what it is. And it was started in like 1976 and it's the largest convention for drummers, right? And so, uh, as I said, I'm just gonna read you guys exactly the information that was given to me. So it says, MD has been invited to perform in the PASIC Percussion Convention in Indianapolis in November, right? So, and, and like we said, like I said before, this is the largest thing uh, or convention that uh, happens for percussion. So it's like the Super Bowl of percussion conventions. And so it's like, a super huge deal to be invited um you know just from a historical black college and university um, and you know what I, I really don't know the history of how many hbcus have been invited uh and so if anybody knows just go ahead and write there write there in the comments man i would love to see it just to be able to get that information man because uh this is a really huge deal for hbcus and so uh because of that fact they are going but here's the caveat to that the caveat to that is the fact that PASIC don't pay for them to go. And seeing as PASIC don't pay for them to go, we or they need your help. Uh, and, and and you know what? I'll say we. And the reason I'll say we is not because I am a Legion member, uh, an alumni of, of the Legion, but because it's an HBCU. It's an HBCU program. And when one of us win, we all win. And for me, this is definitely a win for HBCU band programs, HBCU uh, drum lines. And so I am really big on support. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link for you guys to go ahead and donate to the Spartan Legion and uh, the Million Dollar Funk Squad. I'm going to put that link in the description of this uh, show right now. And I'm also going to go ahead and put up a um, QR code on the screen. Boom right there and i'm doing that so you guys will be able to click the link and show your support this is a perfect time for anybody any and everybody who says you do it for the culture to do it for the culture right this isn't about who your favorite band is this isn't about any of that this is about supporting hbcu band programs hbcu drum lines in a space that is so major right now and so we want to try to make sure we give as much support as you possibly can 50 cents 75 cents a dollar you know twenty dollars a thousand if you got a g you know if you got a thousand go ahead and send it it wouldn't be wrong 
I know I ain't got a thousand to be sitting, but I know I'm going to else. I'm also going to contribute uh, because this is a major thing. We want to can try to contribute as much as we possibly can. So congratulations to uh, Million Dollar Funk Squad. Congratulations to the Spartan Legion. Congratulations to HBCU marching band programs, HBCU drum lines. I'm going to tell you, man, um, it's a really good thing to just be able to see um you know, music, music education in these programs continue to thrive and move forward. Um, and so anytime, anytime that we are recognized on a platform as major as this, I want to try to make sure that we bring light to it and we support it as much as we possibly can. So uh, with that being said, man, congratulations again. The link is going to be in the description of this uh, episode, as well as uh, you all already got the uh, QR code that, that I put up already. So there you go. Uh, go ahead and support them while you have this opportunity. All right. Moving forward, this week has been uh, a very interesting week as it um, pertains to band and not only just marching band or, or not only just this week, but also last week. Uh, there's been a lot of games that have happened this past week. And what I've realized is we got a problem. Uh, I've been seeing it. Um, I've been seeing it multiple times uh, and listening to it multiple times um, throughout so many different avenues and, and uh, um, performances. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to put it out there. We got a trumpet problem. I know, I know. We have a trumpet problem. If you agree, just go ahead and, and just type a one uh, inside of the chat. But we got a trumpet problem. Um, just listening more recently, uh, the most recent things that I've watched were Alabama a and uh, I know Southern UAPB. Um, I know Prairie View and Gramlin. Uh, before that, it was Gramlin and Texas Southern. Um, we have a trumpet problem. And the one thing I'm not going to use as an excuse is um, is instrumentation as a as it pertains to balance. Right. We already know that 20 trumpets don't stand a chance against 13 euphoniums from a sound perspective. Right. You're not going to outplay. You're not 20 trumpets are not going to outplay 13 euphoniums. It's just not going to happen. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a level of cleanliness. We're talking about cleaning up your sections. We're talking about having strong section leaders who are going to go inside of your sectional room and who are going to talk about attacks and releases, not just say, all right, we got to get this music, 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 we got to get this music. I Listen, I understand the fact that there is a high demand now for bands to be able to not only play the top 10, but try to be as current as possible. I get that. Right. But at some point, at some point you have to sacrifice one thing for the greater good of greater good of the other. Right. There should not be trumpet sections coming out of practice rooms, coming to performances without knowing the music. And it's very evident that either one of two things are happening. They're not learning the music or they're not excited about the music that they're learning. And I'm going to be very honest in the fact that it's not about being excited about the music that you're learning. It's about putting the music that's in front of you is the music that you're, that you're supposed to play. If you get music, that's the music you're supposed to play. There is no gray area in that. And I think that that's something that has been lost, too, when we start talking about band programs and when we start talking about being inside of that band room like the students have an option or a choice and it shouldn't work that way but I digress my thing is as a trumpet player I think the focus is going too, too much on screaming I think every I think it's now a situation where we do we have and somebody tell me this if, if you if you are in a program now do we have third First, second, third parts? Like, is that a thing or does everybody just play unison now? Because it just kind of feels that way. It really feels that way. And what I don't like is I don't like the doubling of the mellophone and the trumpet, not necessarily because I think that the mellophone is being used in trumpet range, but because people in their arrangements use the mellophone to, to add to the trumpet to cover up for the inconsistencies in the trumpet. So 
And I'm I'm hearing this in a lot of arrangements too, right? Like if you have a pretty decent mellophone section, a lot of people will add the mellophone to the trumpet. My biggest problem is is that at some point the trumpet's got to sink or swim. And too many times the trumpets are sinking, and I we have to figure out what the issue is on that. We can't blame COVID. We just can't. Yes, we've had a, we've had a lineage of kids that did come through the COVID era that may not have learned or received that much tutelage, but you do realize those kids are like juniors now, seniors. So we can't use that as an excuse. What we can say is we can ask what leadership are you putting inside of these sectional rooms? Because at this point, we have to start looking at who's in front of them. The strong section leader is going to say, all right, we have to learn from here to here. We got to learn this section or we got to learn this block of music. All right. Let's learn the music. Now let's clean it up. And here's the other part about that. Individual pride. Are trumpet players taking individual pride in learning the music? I'll go it. I'll go a step even further. Sectionals really shouldn't be about learning the music. Sectionals should be about rehearsing and cleaning the music because you should already know your music before you show up to sectionals. Now, here's the caveat to that. I can remember multiple times when they would pass out music to us and we'd have to perform it the next day or two days later and we'd work on that music during sectionals. That that happens, right? And I'm not going to take away from that. But there are multiple times where you already have the music, you've had the music for a week and then you go into the section room and you still don't know it. That's called personal pride. Personal pride is saying, okay, I'm going to actually know the music before I walk out of the section room. I'm going to know the music before I walk out of my, my dorm room. Now, I realize too that there are a lot of obstacles against kids nowadays, right? Between 422 battle of the bands that you guys have to do, school work, you know, band uh, 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 perform uh, performances, games, so on and so forth. I get all of that. I get it. I get it. I'm not taking that away from you, but there's a there's a level of personal pride we have to take. You can't just be excited and know the know the songs that you do know or the songs that you like and the songs you don't like, you don't put any effort in. No, you you give 100 percent effort. As a trumpet player, it is very disheartening to to listen to bad entrances. It's your time to shine. Bad entrances. It doesn't make it. You should not be having bad entrances when it's your time to shine. Every song, except for when the whole band has a chord. Everybody's playing a minor chord. You don't miss that one. And I'm going to ask you guys this question. You guys tell me, are we playing, you know, trios in sections anymore? Are we having harmonies in sections or is it just unison everywhere? Which leaves another question. If it's unison everywhere then and you still missing parts and you missing interests and you sounding bad, that means that the whole section don't know that. Trumpets, we got to do better. We got to do better, trumpets. As a trumpet player, we've got to do better. You know, um, it's really interesting to be, to, to hear... <laughs> You know, euphoniums, trombones, and, and don't get me wrong. Let, let me let me put this caveat in there. I know on multiple occasions trombones will have maybe, you know, half notes, whole notes, some eighth notes here. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, you know, those you know, all those kind of lines. Um and in most cases, trumpets are playing more of the melodic line, right? But that's what you signed up for. When you put that instrument in your hand, that's what you signed up for. One thing that I, I, I understood when I was marching, and I think this was a Paul Adams thing, the drum line is expected to be good. The drum line, when you break them down piece by piece, uh, 
I was going to say caption by caption, but section or, or uh, uh, area by area from snares to, to the tenor, to the bass drum. If you have tonal bass drums, if you're doing drop bass, whatever, they're expected to be clean. They're expected to know the cadence, the music, and their sectional features. Individual sectional pieces. So why is that same energy not placed into wind instruments? Why isn't that same energy placed into your trumpets? So at the end of the day, trumpets, we got work to do. We got work to do. Um, we're, we're basically mid season. So we got to step our game up. We got to step our game up. All right. And while we're on this, going to the next topic, we have you ever heard the phrase, we are not a monolith. And as, as it refers to black people, I'm really starting to think that HBCUs are. It's as it refers to, to band, right? Check this out. 40, 40, 20, 40, 40, 20, that equals a hundred. At least, you know, I think so. I think my math is correct. There's 40% of the HBCU band world right now who sound alike. Let's just call it what it is, right? There's another 40% of the band world who's trying to sound like that first 40% who don't sound good. And don't get me wrong, that first 40 doesn't, that first 40 percent doesn't always sound good, but they have a distinctive sound, and that's just kind of what it is. We just go with that distinctive sound and we accept it for what it is, right? There's another 40 percent who are trying to sound like the, the first 40 percent, and they don't sound good. And then there's 20 percent who's doing something completely different that they just don't get no shine. It gets no burn. How do we, how are we supposed to continuously be excited for the first 40%? Think about it. We are more excited from the first 40% than we are about the 20% or the other 40% because the other 40% isn't all that exciting. At what point are we going to say, you know what? We got to be who we are. Case in point, I'm going to give you an example. I haven't been a fan, like fan of Gremlin since maybe the 80s or 90s, I want to say. Around there, right? I watched the Texas Southern and Gremlin game, and I just listened to Gremlin being somebody that, to me, in my personal opinion, I feel like they're not. I feel like they're playing arrangements or, or arrangements that's not characteristic to who they are um, and who they've been, right? Uh, I think that they have instrumentalists in there who are trying to do things that aren't characteristic to who they are. Euphonium's trying to, you know, do certain things. Melophone's trying to do certain things that just aren't to who they are as a, in character. They're almost trying to play the game that everybody else plays, right? Which to me will go to another question of if we're all playing the game, who's winning? But that's neither here nor there. And it was almost disheartening because while I haven't always been a fan of Gremlin, well, I haven't been a fan of Gremlin for a while, I would prefer Gremlin to sound like Gremlin, like what I know them to sound like and, 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 and build on that. I was just having a conversation yesterday and one of the things that I'm realizing, and this, that was not a shot at Gremlin by, by a long shot. I'm just saying my biggest thing is our arrangements, our arrangement styles are now becoming very similar across the board. And anything that falls outside of that version of arranging style is seen as whack, lame, different, um, unacceptable, so on and so forth. But isn't that what we're supposed to be striving for? Shouldn't we be striving to be different? Shouldn't we be striving to not sound like each other? And I think that for me is where my biggest 
gripe comes in is that the first 40% are the ones who get the who make the biggest noise and who get the most attention. And the 20% aren't really getting that much shine. Why? Maybe, maybe it's because they're 20%. But then we have the other part of the 40% who's getting kind of lost in the shuffle of trying to decide on whether they want to continue to be who they were or trying to morph into somebody else. The problem that I feel that we, the biggest problem that I have right now is we have lost identity. We're stagnant. We're stagnant. And we're letting the crowd decide what is right instead of doing it the other way. Train your audience. I will never forget Dr. Sanford's words. You have to train your audience. And I feel like we have lost the art of training our audience and we've let our audience train us. There are certain programs who are going to be who they are and they're going to settle into who they are. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think that what has happened is other programs, certain programs who had their own identifiers started letting the audience tell them that that identifier wasn't good enough instead of taking what they were and capitalizing on who they were. We are going, now we're going along to get along. And at what point does that get played out? That is the biggest question that I have. At what point does saying, okay, you sound like that. You sound like, you sound like this. They sound like you, they sound like you. They're striving to sound like you. Where is the excitement in that? Where is the excitement? And so I think that we have to do a better job of going back, looking at old footage. Because I think that's one of the things that we may have missed. I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I think that's one of the things that we miss is going back and looking at old footage, looking at who we were, taking the things that made you, you and capitalizing off of that, not necessarily being someone else. Right. And one could easily say, well, times change, you know, and you got to change with the times, you know, that that's a very good argument. That's a very, very valid argument. Times change and you have to change with the time. But my thing is, or my question is going to be, what exactly is, does this change look like? Right. Times change. Yes. What does that, what does that change look like? What are, what is, what exactly is changing in which you need to follow suit in that change? Because in my personal opinion, times change means you need to be more creative. You need to be more innovative because the marching arts world is going in one direction. Listen to what I said. The marching arts world is going in one direction and you're stagnant. That's what I mean. That's what I think about when I think times change, not I need to try to sound like these 40% over here because they're the ones who are getting the most, you know, burn, so on and so forth. I think that's the biggest issue. When we're talking about marching band, we're not talking about the music department as a whole. All right. We're only talking about marching band. So, um, yeah, I, I think that we need to really re reevaluate and look at that and really decide on, are we going to try to fit in the first 40%? Or are we going to just start discovering who we are, capitalizing on who we are and build up that 20% to make that 20% 60%. With that being said, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys joining us, man. Leave your comments. You can watch this on playback. It doesn't matter. Leave your comments. Hit the like button on the way out. Also, please make sure you subscribe to the Passionist Network. We will be back in the building. I don't know why we say back in the building because I guess because of my DJing years. But we'll be back this Wednesday with Talk That Talk. Also on Friday, don't forget to check out Dive Related Band Director Krista Williams. Again, also make sure you click that like button on the way out. This has been fun. We will see you guys on next week.